talk about only this part uh, today, but I decided to, uh, to add uh, this work that uh, uh, luckily we got published recently, so I thought it was a good opportunity to talk about that. And it's a perfect phenotope because geometry, elasticity, and uh, um, so yes. So, so I recently moved to uh, uh, Salvador, Brazil, at the Universid uh, Universidade Federal da Bahia. Uh, and uh, I'm going to present some work, uh, not with my Brazilian colleague, but uh, uh, other uh, collaboration. So for the experimental part, uh, I've, I've been working for some time now with uh, Arshad Kudoli and uh, Mumida uh, Dasgupta, who was at that time uh, doing a, a PhD uh, with, uh, with Arshad. And uh, for the, uh, the, the theoretical part with, uh, with Benny and Vincent Demé, who is, no, who is now at uh, ESPCI. So it seems like uh, you, we, we need to, to give some uh, geographic information to uh, where we're working in Brazil. So here is, uh, well, you can read actually, but uh, okay, so you can recognize uh, Brazil. Uh, Rio is here, uh, you're here, and Salvador is in the middle. Okay, so Salvador, it's a, sta it's, a, it's, a, it's a country, but it's also a state. It's a city, and it's in the state of uh, Bahia. And of course, there, there are spectacular beaches, like uh, other <laughs> in other city in Brazil. There's a, a very nice historical uh, uh, district. Turns out that Salvador was once uh, the capital of Brazil a long time ago. Then uh, Rio took over, and now it's Brasilia. Okay, so it's not just uh, uh, beaches. There is uh, also universities. So I'm working at the uh, University uh, Federal de, de Bahia, UVA, which uh, is one of the oldest uh, universities in Brazil. Uh, but I'm uh, working now in the more, more uh, modern part in Compostela and Gina. Okay, so that was for the, uh, some introduction. So the first uh, thing I wanted to talk about is uh, packing with a twist. And uh, it's a very uh, simple uh, experiment. Uh, so let's take uh, a sheet, uh, which is a 2D object with some elasticity. Then you put some tension, okay? So actually it, it wrinkles already uh, when you put some tension, but uh, I'm interested in what is happening when you put some tension and you, and you give a twist, okay? And so if you twist a lot, what you can see is that there is a, a, a packing of the cross section at a certain location. So I wanted to, uh, uh, we really wanted to understand how you go from a 2D geometry, which is here where you clamp the, 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 the thin sheet, and as you go along the longitudinal axis, you are uh, going to a, a quasi 1D geometry, a basic yarn. And the kind of question you can ask is, uh, for example, what's the internal structure of the yarn? It should be very complicated relative to the, uh, to the wrinkles that you see here. Can we control the, the, the internal structure? And uh, also in a very naive question, uh, since you're packing something, then you can think of uh, what's the, the confining pressure because it's going to the center, but I don't apply anything at the center. Okay. Um, oh yes. And it's very general. Uh, you don't need to take a, a ribbon or a thin sheet if you take a towel and then it's, if it's too wet or too wet water, if you twist it, you know that you can expel the, the water out of the towel. It's a very uh, common experiment. If you're angry and then you want to uh, put your nerves on, the, on a co uh, coke can, you can uh, uh, do that. And then if you're creative, uh, you can even make some uh, dogs out of a balloon. So there's always a, it's always related to a twist and there's always some uh, compaction in the middle. Okay. Uh, and it, there are some application. Uh, now it's n uh, there, there was not so recent, but a uh, recent study made by Lima and, uh, and uh, co-workers, where they they they, they, they propose to make yarns out of uh, a, a, a ribbon, and then if you twist, uh, you can get a, a very uh, complicated internal structure for the yarn. Okay, so crumpling, so all kind of structure. They figure out that uh, what you see here can be explained with this kind of schematic. I, it's very hard to see. I think it's much more complicated here. And one, one particular application that uh, is interesting is that if you want to make a yarn out of a very exotic material, for example, it's difficult because it usually can be fragile or ductile, so it's difficult to produce a yarn, but you can spray that, that material on the ribbon and then twist the ribbon and so you can encapsulate uh, some material. So it's going to be very interesting in that respect. Okay, so uh, wrinkles up here. So there is, uh, it's not the first time that uh, you see wrinkles in this, con in this conference. Uh, wrinkles up, uh, up here when there is a, a thin sheet that is uh, 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 stretched in one direction and not in the other direction. You can see here it happens at various scales, even for uh, suspending uh, graphene. And there are some uh, understanding of uh, why it happens. Uh, there is uh, lots of people worked uh, on this problem. 
okay, from some times ago. But there is uh, um, a, a, a very uh, important paper on this uh, on this topic, which was uh, released by uh, Serda, Ravishanda, and Madhavan, where uh, they were, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was the first time they, they, they provide a model or scaling for the, the wavelength that appears as you take a, a thin elastic sheet and you stretch it. And so they found that uh, the wavelength goes uh, uh, decrease as uh, you, you, you're, you're stretching the, the thin sheet. So that was uh, interesting. And so something also that can be useful is that they made an analogy uh, uh, with, uh, oops, sorry. Okay. Uh, between a suspending sheet that is uh, uniaxially stretched and uh, so now I understand why it's complicated because the, the pointer is next to the one. The arrow for changing the side. Okay, so the, the, the tension in that direction is, uh, gives an effective stiffness to the system. So what is happening is that uh, you have uh, uh, some compression in that direction, so the sheet wants to buckle, uh, and so you have an out-of-plane mode, but because there is tension in the other direction, the, uh, the amplitude, large amplitude are penalized. So there's a, a compromise, a trade-off, so you buckle, but a smaller wavelength. Okay? And so this penalization of, the, of out of plane modes can be modeled as an effective substrate related to the tension that you apply. If there is no substrate, you can see large deformation. If there is a substrate, small wrinkles. Okay? So I'm going to talk about effective substrate later. Okay, uh, now there's a, an obvious question is where the compression is coming from. Because you're just having tension in that direction, there's no compression here. And so still uh, it's, it's, it's complicated to... Uh, <laughs> to understand from a hand-waving argument where there is compression, but still you can calculate the, the, the stress field uh, uh, before buckling. So you do finite analysis, element analysis. And then if you take a, uh, a rectangle uh, here, there is tension in that direction. So I'm looking at the, 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 the transverse uh, stretch, stress, sorry. It's tension and the tension here, and there is uh, compression in that region, small compression, but uh, compression, so it should be negative here. And so then you can expect that there's uh, some uh, instability going on here. What's interesting is that it depends on the aspect ratio. Uh, if you're taking a ribbon here, you see that there is uh, uh, no, the, the, the compression is, uh, is just localized here, and then uh, you don't see uh, wrinkle. Okay, so the question is that uh, I can get wrinkle uh, out of a, of a ribbon, for example, if I take this belt, and then I, I'm twisting it, so I twist. What you see is an helicoid that, uh, 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 that we, uh, we saw uh, the first talk. And then as you start to twist, there's an instability going on. And then you see that it starts to buckling here in, uh, in the fundamental road, uh, mode. So that, uh, uh, that model uh, here, uh, so it means that there is a, it's a distinct uh, instability. So to go further, so we can do the experiment. Uh, the experiment is you take a ribbon with a given geometry, it's under tension, and you apply a twist. It's a macroscopic experiment, basically that the, the type of object, uh, the geometry I'm using in this one, I'm using not a belt, but uh, a, a, a simple elastic sheet, tip pipe uh, mylar. Here are some uh, dimension. And this is what you uh, what you can get. So it's a, it's a picture that you have here. We can shine a, a laser sheet, and then you can de detect the out of plane deformation in that in that case. And then if the ribbon is long and thick, we have uh, the fundamental mode. If uh, we make it thinner, then you, you can have a, a smaller uh, wrinkle. So we want to understand that you can be uh, quantitative. So the first guess uh, uh, to understand where the compression comes from, the transverse compression comes from. So you can. Imagine that uh, you have uh, the ribbon here, I isolate longitudinal uh, fiber, and then if you make a half turn, it's intuitively you, you expect that the fiber at the edge, they're gonna meet at some point. So the instability, yes. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw that it's not in the. You have to. Okay, so it, you, you have the same kind of phenomenology if you're using a, a cylindrical uh, rod. So as you twist, you can twist a rod, keeping the distance uh, between the two clamps fixed, 
you twist at a certain amount, and then if you release the tension, at some point you can form a plectro name. You have this kind of uh, instability for ribbon too, but uh, I know I saw it, but because yes, yeah, we are uh, in, in, a, in a tensional regime where you don't we don't see that. Uh, okay, and so there is a natural guess saying that okay, so the the, the fiber at the edge is uh, is uh, has the shape of an helix, okay, so it wraps uh, around the cylinder. There's a curvature associated to that, and so why not saying that the transverse compressive stress is related to the twist angle squared because of a, a, a symmetry argument times the longitudinal tension, because you have a curve uh, line, it's under tension, so you expect that there is a normal force, uh, a force normal to the curvature you're applying. Okay. So what you can do, so that's basically uh, the, the, that you can put that argument into uh, being more um, let's say, uh, uh, explicit. So imagine that uh, you have a, a helicoid shape. There is uh, what you do, you apply a tension. So you stretch the fiber, and as you twist, there's also a contribution to the twist. So there are two contributions to the deformation of the fiber along that direction. Because we know the geometry, we, we know what's the contribution to the, to the helix. It's proportional to the, the twist you apply squared. There is also this condition that I haven't talked about. So we impose the load at the top, so hang uh, a mass. And so it means that the fiber, the mean uh, deformation, or the deformation of the fiber uh, average over the cross section is related to the tension you're applying, gives you this uh, relation. And at the end, what you get is the, the, the deformation of the fiber as a function of the twist and the tension. Okay, so it's not more, much more complicated than that. You can go through the path. Interestingly, at very large uh, torsion here, you see that there is a negative uh, contribution and you can get compression. But you can get compression not in the transverse dire direction, but longitudinally. Okay, so what we can get with this kind of argument is that uh, in some regime, you have longitudinal compression. How you, how it is that the, can you, uh, the, the, and the consequence is that you can have longitudinal wrinkling. So uh, if you start uh, with a ribbon like this and you, you twist as you go from the left, you start seeing a uh, longitudinal wrinkle here. And as you keep on twisting, the, the, the amplitude of the wrinkle uh, increases. But then only that, you have a symmetry breaking. An, the the right-left symmetry is broken. And you have even localization uh, uh, of the curvature along folds. So uh, we, uh, we're still trying to, uh, to understand uh, more quantitatively uh, this, uh, this part. But that's very interesting because it's a way of making uh, origami and uh, in a very simple way. Uh, uh, again, so uh, if you open the book and you want to know how to make an helicoid, well, you can uh, follow this kind of, uh, of pattern. So you fold a long triangular uh, pattern and you alternate the angle of folding. And spontaneously, you, you can create some, uh, some uh, helicoid and you can change the, 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 the size of the triangle. And when the triangle is, uh, I don't know, say that uh, is, uh, is large, the, the angle is large, then you have some strong deviation from the helicoid. But it's interesting to see what you can get, get that too. OK, so that, that, that's a very interesting part. But then uh, the, we, we still don't know uh, how to capture the compression in the transverse direction. OK, so this is uh, then what we can do is to use the Foucault van Fokkerman equations who uh, are, uh, uh, gives you the force balance in the, uh, that you can use to solve the equilibrium problem of a 3D uh, 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 elastic uh, uh, sheet. So these are very complicated uh, equations. So there are three equations because there are three directions in space. And there is, they are nonlinear. It couples the, the tension in one direction with the curvature. You have bending here. Here is the, the, the equilibrium uh, equation the, in the horizontal direction. Usually, you can solve them uh, analytically. But if you apply this equation uh, for uh, the helicoid shape, they are very simple. So that's very, that's very good. And so you can solve them analytically. And what you could get at the end is the, uh, uh, the longitudinal term I was talking about uh, earlier, which is exactly the same form because I'm using non-dimensionalized non unity. It doesn't exactly, it's not exactly the same, but you have a negative term here. But most importantly is that when you solve this equation, you have zero uh, uh, stress in that direction. Okay, so 
My uh, simple argument saying that uh, because the, the edge of the ribbon is along an helix and there's some tension and uh, so that you have a compression, this hand waving argument is not captured by the Foucault von Karman equation. So either I'm wrong or there's uh, something that you have to do with the Foucault von Karman equation. Uh, so that's uh, how uh, uh, we, uh, we started a collaboration uh, with uh, Vincent Demry and, uh, and Benny. I'm, I'm not going to go the, through the math because basically the Foucault von Karman equation, there's some approximation. So it doesn't, count, it doesn't take into account uh, all finite rotation. Uh, uh, so, uh, so there are some, some approximation. And then if you make the, the, the equation more general, and then, uh, so you have an another set of equations, and then if you apply this new set of equations for the helicoid, what you can get is this kind of equation. Okay, so before we, oops, before we had that, and now with this new set of equations, it's almost the same except that there is this new term. Okay, so there's a new coupling between the, the twist that you apply and, uh, and the, the implant tension. And with that, you can solve that. Not, not uh, exactly easy, but you can solve it. And then you, you, you end up with the same uh, 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 stretch in that uh, strain in that, uh, stress, sorry, in that direction, but then you have a non-zero uh, compression. And then, uh, okay, and so actually we are, uh, my hand wave argument uh, works because what you have is uh, eta squared, the, the twist that you apply, times something related to the longitudinal tension. So basically my hand wave argument is a good way to understanding why there is instability in that direction. And, uh, and it's very nice also to have an analytical solution. So then uh, I can go uh, uh, a little bit faster because now that we have, uh, all, all we, have all we need, uh, we have to do a balance between the, 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 the compression in that direction, the, the buckling uh, out of plane, and the effect of the tension in the other direction, okay? And if you do that, uh, what you, you have as a prediction is that uh, there are two regimes for uh, L finite. You have a, a scaling for the threshold for this instability, the tension. There's also a, a scaling for the wavelength. But there's another regime for uh, when L is infinite. And then, because L is infinite, then the scaling doesn't depend on L. And in that case, you have a buckle, so the, the wavelength is, uh, is more or less the width of the ribbon. Okay, so we can check that. We were a bit worried go to infinity to check this scaling, but so we have to, to be careful when we do experiment. So start, uh, first, uh, we start uh, counting the, the, the modes that we, have, uh, that we see as a function of the aspect ratio. At low aspect ratio, uh, uh, in that case, we are in the, let's say, square geometry. We have large uh, number of wrinkles, and then as you go to uh, uh, the ribbon geometry, you start to have uh, the buckling instability. Okay, so we can measure that. Uh, we can also measure the threshold for this instability. So here, uh, it's the threshold as a function of the aspect ratio in log log plot. Oops. And uh, indeed, we see that the threshold is, uh, is um, decreasing as a function of length. And it's normal because if the, uh, if the ribbon uh, is larger, the contribution of the tension to, uh, to prevent large deformation out of plane is, is weaker. Okay, so there is a, it, but it depends on the length. So then we wanted to understand, so uh, is there a regime where it's length, length independent? So the regime where it buckles. The problem is that we are already at uh, aspect ratio uh, 100. So we were centim uh, one centimeter wide ribbon, 100 meters, one meter. And one meter, that's okay in, a, in an experimental room. Okay, the, 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 the roof, is no, the, the ceiling is three meters, so that's, that's okay. Now uh, a theorist is going to say, okay, let's go to the next decade. And uh, in that case, we have to do experiment like uh, Mark uh, uh, one, <laughs> one or two uh, shoulders. So you have to, to stretch uh, something from one side of the room to the other side. And uh, that's, that's complicated because also gravity takes uh, into account. So what uh, Arsha then uh, uh, started to, to do is to take a ribbon at the top of, of the physics building until the bottom, so how many stairs, it's not, uh, it's not uh, a skyscraper, no, but it's 16 meter long ribbon, so I don't know how many feet, but that, that's really a lot, and that's uh, what you need to do to get uh, one more decade experimentally, so that's uh, what we do. Uh, and then when you do that, uh, where we were happy, because uh, we couldn't do uh, much higher, then we, we start uh, seeing a plateau. 
So basically, we identified these two regimes, something that is L-dependent, it wrinkles, and L-independent, where it buckles. Okay. Uh, it has been re recently published, this part. Okay, so that's good. That's the first step. We can uh, see now it's more, I don't want to go into the details because basically it, uh, since it, the ingredient I showed you, it's all it needs to, to understand precisely the morphology. So here the threshold as a function of what you expect, T over W with a, a, a tension dependence, you see that it, uh, it goes on the, on the, on the on the prediction, the data goes on the with the, the, the prediction. It's a linear plot because we don't have much decay to go to, uh, to use a log log plot. Here it's for uh, the, the buckling instability. You can also do that with the wrinkling instability. Uh, the length is uh, smaller. And you can see that you have a, a very nice agreement. It's a log log plot in that case. And all the data collapse on the what you expect uh, theoretically. So basically, we think that we are we are really on this. Uh, wrinkling instability and something that uh, we can uh, some lesson that we learn is that uh, uh, you, you of course you, you don't need a, 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 an infinitely long ribbon so what infinitely means for, for an experimentalist uh, it means that you have to be uh, larger than this typical quantity so we call that the bendability length scale LB that depends on the geometry of the ribbon and the tension when L is larger, that this length, uh, it's the reverse. I just made that slide before starting, and of course, uh, I did it wrong. So when it's basically, when it's large, uh, uh, you get the buckling. When it's smaller than LB, you get the wrinkling. And then the, 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 the crossover between the two regimes is this thing. And that's very interesting, because if you want to control the morphology of a ribbon, then you can play on that uh, uh, with, this, uh, with this length. You can, for example, change the width and then you can switch from uh, one transition to the other, or, or the tension. Something that we want to understand now, and uh, it's an ongoing work, uh, we it was a near threshold uh, analysis, and we want to understand how, when you twist way above the instability, you can have some uh, interesting shape, for example, a closed loop. If uh, you have a, a mode two uh, instability, mode three uh, instability, you can form an accordion, or even this kind of a shape, like a yin yang shape, which can be interesting to have a functionalized uh, yarn, for example. Okay, oh yeah, and then th there's an analogy also. Uh, here you have the, the filament, uh, the cross section of the, uh, of the ribbon that is here, yin yang shape. Since I was talking that you can interpret this shape using the, an effective substrate uh, effect, well, why not uh, saying that, uh, that you have a, you have the similar shape with uh, a skin on the top of, uh, of a liquid bath, which is here. This is a famous paper uh, from uh, the Serda group. And there was a, a solution by uh, uh, Hein Diamo and Tom Witten, the anti-symmetric uh, solution of this problem that really looks like uh, what we find uh, experimentally. Okay, so is there a way to map these two problems? That could be an interesting question. Yeah. This one? It's uh, no, it's uh, they're in contact. It's uh, uh, it's doing something like this, and of course, it's not uh, the shape evolves as you scan from one clamp to the other. So now the question is: Are there uh, other questions? Now there's a challenge. There is the second part of my talk. Uh, that four minutes. So there's some uh, selection I've got to do. So th there's a simple message, but uh, there, there's a little introduction to, uh, with that. So uh, I was talking about uh, shape at equilibrium. And then when you work in an experimental lab, uh, at some point you have an elastic object, and there's another student working with fluids. And then you say, oh, OK, so what happens if I put my, uh, my sheet or my uh, uh, filaments in the fluid? And then uh, you can steer, and then you see interesting things are happening. So the really that was the story of this part of the of, of the talk. Uh, but for a little bit of context, uh, I was gonna talk, I'm, I'm going to talk about filaments in a fluid. And there's lots of examples of, uh, of viscous fluid, low Reynolds number. And there's lots of situations when this, uh, this happens. For example, you can think in, the bio uh, in biology, the microtubules that they are into the, the uh, in, in, in living cells. Uh, Oh, 
Okay, so there's a. Okay, so you imagine that you have filament. I wanted to show a buckling instability that's here, but you can really imagine that can ha it can happen because it's a thin structure, and when you when you apply stress, it buckles. Another situation where you have actin filament in the in the shear flow, you can see that you have it goes straight, it buckles, and then it goes straight. So there is this kind of instability here. There is a filament that is uh, advected by uh, some uh, some flow, it deforms. And uh, also, you can have uh, active uh, in the active matter world. You have uh, the E. coli on the spermatozoid that they're flapping their their filament, and they can move. So the interaction between uh, elasticity and uh, and viscosity. Okay, so that's not new. That's a it's a well known uh, 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 theme. The only thing that uh, uh, we want you to understand is that these are complications. Or the system is complicated because it's biological. All the flow field is uh, trivial. It's a stagnation point. So we wanted to have a simple situation that we can analyze fully to the end. So the simple situation that uh, I, I discovered that maybe we can uh, add some uh, names at the uh, earlier elastica. So I would add uh, earlier Stokes elastica because you have an elastica which is in the viscous fluid. And there is uh, uh, some uh, at low Reynolds number. So there are viscous drag. So you can there it's like coupling the uh, uh, the stocks flow with the uh, elasticity of a filament. So why not calling that uh, stocks elastica? Uh, and so the the idea is that the most simplest experiment you can do is that you have your filament and then you compress it in the fluid and then what what, what is happening? Okay. Ah, okay. And I I, I want you to do the extra the introduction. Ah, okay. That's so there's more. Okay, so here is the, the moving clamp. The bottom is here. It's vertical, actually. And then I'm, I'm going to move that clamp at uh, one centimeter per second. And I'm going to do it by hand. So you see that it's moving. And at some point, it buckles. So that's something already interesting. And then as you move on, you can see that there is a coarsening of the, uh, of this instability of the, the wavelength. So you go from uh, short wavelength to large wavelength. I can show you, uh, so you can analyze the uh, the shape. And now I'm going to use a log logarithmic time, and then now it's just uh, the the, uh, the, the uh, digitized shape of the ribbon. I changed the scale to make it uh, uh, more visual, and this is what you have. So a fast dynamics and a slow relaxation towards the equilibrium position. Okay. So that's our system. Okay. So there are, uh, depending on the viscosity, you can have localization of the buckling instability near the, the, the indenter. But if you're using glycerol, that doesn't happen. And we are going to go, uh, we're going to use the glycerol. And something now, there's an extra dimension, time. And the wavelength depends on uh, how much, uh, how, how fast you're compressing the, the, the filament. So then if you want to uh, have, um, uh, to functionalize an elastic object, you can play on the, uh, the wrinkling stability uh, at equilibrium, but now there's an extra dimension. So you can maybe push faster and then you have temporarily, uh, oops, this kind of structure, okay? so. There are other situations where, where it happens. You can have a skin on the viscous uh, uh, bath, and then also you have a wavelength that depends on the compression. It's ex not exactly the same geometry, but uh, the, the idea is the same. So can we understand that, this, uh, this decrease of the wavelength as a function of seed? And in that case, uh, yeah. so you can use uh, how, how late? OK. So you can do uh, a linear stability analysis. And uh, I'm sure that all of you know that. So you, you, uh, you, uh, you linearize this case. And then when you linearize, you have an exponential growth. And you have a growth rate that depends on the what you're doing. And it depends, in that case, on the, the indenter, uh, how far you're pushing. OK, so that's, uh, that's good. But there's no speed dependence. So the lesson of, uh, of this thing is that to understand what is happening with our filaments, you had to include 
the, the dynamics, the loading dynamics, you're going to include that you're pushing as so, uh, at the same time the, the instability is growing. Okay, it's not independent in our experiment. And when you do that, so you, I, I'm not sure you know the, the analysis, you have a growth rate that depends on the speed. The, the wave vector is speed dependent with a small but uh, non-zero uh, exponent. And the growth is super exponential. So you have a non-trivial di dynamics uh, at threshold, which is very, uh, very interesting. And, uh, and it works. So you do the experiment, the numerics, and uh, because it's a simple problem, so you can solve everything. And now the question is that it's uh, basically it's a ramp. And then uh, the question is that can we uh, 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 reach other morphology by applying more complex, more complex uh, loading? That's all. And I'm sorry for being late. <laughs>